Ready, Lisa? Psalmist says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Good morning. Good, morning. Good to see everyone this morning. We have a, a busy and a, a blessed day today as we celebrate our graduates and we present third graders with their Bibles and we have Recognition Sunday as well as celebrating Pentecost, the birthday of the church. That's a lot. Let's start with Rhonda and announcements. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Happy birthday to Chloe Gardner and Emily DeVos today. Joe Scalfaro on the third. Jody and Jordan on the seventh. And Terry Fosma on the eighth. Happy anniversary to Duke and Susan and Dana Julianne Smith on the fifth. And Scott and Emily Herman on the sixth. And Jim and Judy Roscoe on the eighth. Today after worship, everyone is invited downstairs to hear from our graduates about their future plans. Congratulations, graduates. We will also celebrate Pentecost with a prayer and bubbles. We also have a cake honoring the graduates and cupcakes for the birthday of the church. We will celebrate communion next Sunday, the 9th, during worship, since this Sunday is so busy. Vacation Bible School will be held Monday, July 8th through Friday, July 12th from 6 to 8.15. Our theme is Camp Firelight, and we will sing, make crafts, hear Bible stories, play games, and have snacks. Our station leaders are always in need of helpers, so if you would like to lend a hand, please let Becky Skidmore know. We will soon have a list of needed items available for people to help out that way, too. Thank you in advance. Sunday, August 11th at 11, is our outdoor service and picnic at the Rootstown Park. 
Chicken and beverages will be provided. Please bring food to share on your own table service. And our church won first place in the adult category for our float in the parade. Thank you everyone who worked on that, that float. With all the weather, adverse weather and everything. <laughs> And um, Parent Hope Rescue was, sent us a card thanking us for our donation to their cause. Do we have any joys or concerns? Two weeks. <laughs> I'm so excited. I can't hardly stand it. I talked to her yesterday, and she has told everyone from her Uber driver to an architect that she doesn't even know. That I will be visiting <laughs> and I've been telling everyone that I'm going to visit her <laughs> I'm just so excited go ahead Tracy um, I just wanted to ask for prayers for the family of Pam Coons she was a friend of mine from a school where she passed away so we did this last week had a um, celebration of life for her today gentleman I used to work with at ODOT, Steve Jones, he passed away, so if we could keep his family in our prayers. And my neighbor, Marie, that we've been praying for, she has to have a scan to see if the cancer has metastasized, is that how you say it, to her brain. So hopefully not. So just keep her in our prayers also. Anyone else? Let's continue with our morning worship. So since it's Sunday School Recognition today, I was reading about some things that's, that's happened in some Sunday School classes. One Sunday, a Sunday School teacher was describing how Lot's wife had looked back on Sodom when they had to, to leave their home. And when she looked back, she, the teacher said that she turned into a pillar of salt. And Jason interrupted her and said, my mommy looked back once when she was driving, and she turned into a telephone pole. <laughs> and then the teacher was talking about the story of the Good Samaritan one Sunday, and she said to the class, now if you saw a person lying on the side of the road, and the person was wounded and bleeding, what would you do? And this little girl thought for a moment, she said, I think I'd throw up. <laughs> and then a Sunday school teacher said, Johnny, do you think that Noah did a lot of fishing when he was out there on the ark? And Johnny said, no, how could he? He only had two worms. <laughs> then one Sunday after church, during fellowship time, I turned to Rachel and I said, and what did you learn in Sunday school today, little girl? And she said, patience. <laughs> well, God loves a, a good sense of humor and always lets us know that no matter what we face in life, that the Holy Spirit is always with us. And we'll talk about that today. Let's begin with our prelude. <laughs>
Let's join together in our unison call to worship and opening prayer. In the daylight, in the darkness, in the clamor, in the silence, in the thinking, in the feeling, in the head knowledge, in the heart wisdom, in ages past and time present, you have spoken to your people, O Lord. Even now, in this time, in this place, we say, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. Amen. And let's sing together, I was there to hear your warning cry. Gabby and Owen up front. Andrew is not able to be with us. He was out of town today. things like Sunday school and vacation Bible school and church outings and mother-child banquet, women's advent evening, and she's been a, a great scripture reader for us different times. Um, she's been in the Christmas programs and just generally an all-around good helper whenever she's here. Gabby, um, what are some of the highlights from your high school that you want to share with me your high school? 
definitely playing golf. Um, and competing has been a big part of my high school career. Um, I was the team captain the past year and um, the most valuable player the past three years. Um, I went to the state tournament, um, set some school records. And in addition to that, I've uh, volunteered with National Honor Society, so I present food pantries at our schools, concession stands, helping at our local library, I was on uh, different executive class committees, so I helped plan a lot of our senior activities, junior activities, sophomore activities. Um, I was a freshman mentor, so uh, when new freshmen would come in to school, we'd give them tours, show them around, uh, help them become accustomed to school. I was also a member of Hope Squad, which is a suicide prevention um, program, so we would learn about signs uh, for people who are struggling with their mental health, how to help, and how to seek help for that. So, just trying to be involved. Any of you are Owen graduated from Talmadge High School, and he's also been a part of the church since before he was born. And um, he's had the extra benefit of being able to take part also in St. Matthew's Parish in Ellis. Owen oh, has taken part in Sunday school and church outings and the mother child banquet, the Christmas programs, and vacation Bible school. One of which will always stand out in my mind because I will always remember that we were at Bible school and we came in to pick up the kids and the kids weren't here. <laughs> so we all kind of panicked a little bit and we're running around going, they were here, we know they were here until somebody said, oh, well, Denise came in and picked the kids up earlier, which got us to start having parents sign the children out when they, when they picked the kids up from, from Bible school. Um, so, Owen, what are some of the highlights and some of your favorite times from high school? So, I went through private school up until eighth grade, so I came to town as freshman and not knowing anyone. So, definitely making a lot of connections with a lot of my friends is probably one of my favorite things. I got to meet a lot of people, um, got to do a lot of new things. I was a member of the Thomas Swim team for four years. I was on the track team for two years. Um, I was captain this year of the swim team. That was my favorite thing. I just love trying to recruit a lot of new people to join the sport. Because it's not necessarily the most fun thing to do. Um, and it's very physically taxing. And so we have a lot of kids who are kind of scared that I don't want to join. And so you have to kind of get a good team going to get everyone to actually swim. And I was also a member of NHS like Patty. Um, I was a member of Leaders in Action, which is a volunteer program at Town High School. So between the two of us, I have a decent number of volunteer hours. Um, I was the lead in our school in school this year with the Little Mermaid. I was Prince Eric. So that was something new I tried. Um, so that was that was great. Um, and one of my favorite things to do is public speak. And so I spent a lot of time this year speaking for a lot of different events as class officers. So that gave me an opportunity to speak at graduation and speak at our distinguished college event, which is for students who have achieved really high in GPA. And I was honored to be their um, like speaker of the night. So that was really important to me. Thank you. Well, 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 well. And following worship downstairs, we have a couple of gifts for them. But before they get their gifts, they have to talk about what their future plans are. And we'll have some cake and also bubbles for four and so forth. So thank you for coming out. Congratulations. And let's have a prayer for our graduates. Loving God, we pray that you would surround those who are graduating, Gabby and Owen and Andrew, with your grace. Bless them with hope so that they move into the future with eager and with open hearts. Help them to put the knowledge and the skills and the insights they've gained through their education to good use for the good of humankind. And inspire them to believe in the goodness of life, even when faced with challenges and difficulties. As their lives travel on from here, May they grow ever more grateful and wise. We place them in your loving hands, God, and in Jesus' name we offer up this prayer. Amen.
let's continue with our Psalter responsive reading. <coughs> We have a slideshow next. Oh, gosh. How could I forget that? <laughs> we have to embarrass you guys a little bit, right? We, <laughs> we have some great pictures um, for the slideshow honoring our graduates. Thank you. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. 
My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of, sum of them! Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Jerusalem was packed. People from all over the Roman Empire were visiting for a celebration. But Jesus' disciples were nowhere to be found. Really? Why? You see, after Jesus died on the cross, they had gotten some good news and some sad news. What was the good news? Jesus was alive! Yes, yes, yes! That was good news. And uh, what was the sad news? Jesus was going to leave them. Oh. But there was also some other good news. Good. Oh, double good. What was it? It was time for Jesus' friends to spread the good news about his kingdom. But that's a ginormous drug. Which is why Jesus left them with even more good news. Jesus promised to send his followers a helper. A helper? Who? No one knew. So, for the time being, Jesus' friends hid in Jerusalem, waiting and praying. They hid? They didn't want the Pharisees and Sadducees coming after them like they had come after Jesus. So, they were trying very hard not to attract too much attention. I get it. One day passed, then two, then... We've been praying for three days, and still no sign of a helper. What should we do? What Jesus told us to do, I guess. So they continued to pray. Four days passed, five... Six, seven, eight. It's been nine days. What should we do? Then, on the tenth day, boom! Boom? A sound like a huge wind filled the house. And something that looks like little flames of fire appeared over their heads. Ah. What was it? The Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit. Whoa! Was the Holy Spirit the helper Jesus promised? Yes! The helper had come. Amazing! And something even more amazing happened. Because as the disciples were filled with God's Spirit, they began to praise God and praise the Lord. And what of the Van Burstel gas? Huh? What did you say? What of the Van Burstel gas? Bajian Stoy Espesur. Hey, how do you know that language? <laughs> Everyone in the room began speaking in different languages that they didn't know. Whoa! That was really helpful because remember, during those days, people from all over the Roman world were visiting Jerusalem. Suddenly, they were hearing all about Jesus in their own language. It was a miracle! Hey, everybody! Have I got news for you! Wait, I thought Jesus' friends were all hiding. Not anymore. God's helper helped them to be brave. Peter boldly told the people all about Jesus. And guess what? There's more? <laughs> oh, yes. The crowd was so amazed with Peter's message that, well, 
Guess how many of them became followers of Jesus that day? Oh, uh, let's see. Ten? <laughs> Higher. Twenty? Higher. Thirty? Forty? Sixty? One hundred? Three thousand! What? Yep. Then, Jesus' disciples started bravely talking about Jesus all over Jerusalem. Everyone must have been amazed. They were. Except for, well, you know who. Yep, still us. The Pharisees and Sadducees. And just as grumpy as ever. Hey! You better stop talking about Jesus or... or... or we'll arrest you! They threatened the disciples, but the disciples went on telling people about Jesus anyway. Because Jesus sent them the Helper? Yes, for the first time ever, God's spirit and power were available for all of Jesus' followers. And with that power, they would go out and change the world. Do you want more luck? and blessings and mercy be unto you from a loving and a merciful God. <clears throat> so let me tell you a little secret. Even though part of our celebration today is Pentecost that we just heard about, Pentecost was really May 19th, but because I was on vacation that Sunday, council said, well, let's hold Pentecost today with all of our other celebrations. So why was Pentecost May 19th? Well, because Pentecost is 50 days after Easter Sunday, so if you count 50 days from what, what was March 31st, you have today for Pentecost. How do we know this? Because we know that originally the Jewish religion commemorated the day of Pentecost as this special day when people would come from all over to gather together in Jerusalem to um, thank God for, for the harvest. So on that 50th day, they would bring their first fruits and they would um, honor those fruits and, and give those first fruits to God. And it was known as Pentecost or the Feast of Weeks. So we know that that's why all these different people from so many different areas that spoke so many different languages were all gathered together into one place. And God did this pretty amazing thing. You know, following through on this promise that Jesus had made to his disciples before he left them, that and, and he went back to heaven, he promised them that he wouldn't leave them alone, but that he would send them a helper, an advocate. Jesus promised them that he would send them this comforter, this supporter, this, this advocate, and he did it then in this pretty huge and impressive way. God didn't just say, okay, you know, I want you to know that I'm still with you, you know, don't worry about it, you know, the Holy Spirit's here with you now. Nope, God took what was actually a pretty ordinary occurrence, Pentecost, it was something that happened every year, and he made it into something spectacular. You know, God rained down on them tongues of fire, and if that weren't enough, he made it so all these different people that spoke in different languages would understand each other and they had this whole big huge wind that happened and so forth and he let them know that God would bring them together and unite them just as Jesus and he were one so too we are one with God and we're one with God as we spread that mission of love and mercy and awesomeness all over the world. So why didn't God just quietly tell the disciples that he was still with them on this journey? Well, because I think one thing that God really loves to do is to assure us that we are always provided for even more than we can ask for or imagine for ourselves. Maxie Dunman, who is um, currently the 
president emeritus at Asbury Theological Seminary. He, he talks about this story about Brother Lawrence. He says this, he says, many of you know the name Brother Lawrence. If you've not read his book, The, the Practice of the Presence of God, then you've probably heard the, him as a preacher or a teacher or someone speak of, of Brother Lawrence along the way. He said he served in the kitchen of a monastery and he said that he experienced this presence of God as clearly in washing pots and pans as in the Blessed Sacrament. Well, though known as Brother Lawrence, his real name was actually Nicholas Herman, and he was born into a peasant family in Lorraine, France in 1611. At the age of 18, he said that he was awakened to the presence of God as he was sitting in nature and he was gazing up at this tree and he was thinking about how, you know, this bare tree is once again going to come to life with all this new renewal and leaves and so forth. And then later on, he became a professional soldier, but he was wounded, and so he retired from the army. And the rest of his life, he actually walked with a pretty bad limp. And then sometime later, he, he thought, well, I'm going to try living as a hermit. Well, that didn't really work out for him either. So eventually he joined the Carmelite order in Paris as a lay brother, and he served there in the kitchen, and he also served as a cobbler. Now he's known then for his record of his conversations with God and his writings that are, in call, that are called the practice of the presence of God. Well, like many other people, Brother Lawrence, when he entered the monastic order, he had this feeling that he was probably giving up, you know, all of that world's happiness and so forth. But he says that what, he, what happened was he actually ended up discovering this even deeper happiness than he had ever imagined that he could be. Well, he was reflecting on this one day, and he wrote down and he said to God, you have outwitted me. Now, I really like that phrase. God, you have outwitted me. You know, what a, a testimony to that providence of God, you know, that working of God's grace in our lives and that amazing ability that God has to always do so much more than we ever hoped for or imagined or prayed for. Now the word providence, providence of God, it comes from the same root word as to provide. So it's this ongoing theme throughout all of scripture when we look at that. And it certainly is a theme in the psalm that we read today, and it certainly is a theme in what we, what we heard here today from Acts 2. But God's love and ability to provide for us isn't just contained in those two scriptures. No, throughout the whole Bible and throughout the centuries, we have that knowledge and we have stories of God who, who loves us. And as, as Brother Lawrence said, a God who always outwits us by giving us more than we ever thought possible. You know, this is the same God who created the whole world and everything in it. It's the God who provided for Noah with the ark. It's the God of Abraham and Sarah who traveled to this land that they didn't know and ended up having a child well past childbearing years. It's the God who provided for the Israelites with food through this famine, through Joseph, if you remember, was sold into slavery by his brother, but ended up rising to number two in all of Egypt and providing then for his family when this famine happened. This outwitting God is the same God who led those same Israelites out of slavery in Egypt, remember through that parting of the Red Sea, and the God who helped a shepherd boy slay that mighty giant Goliath. It's the same God who brought the Israelites back home when they had been conquered and dispersed all over. And it's the same God who kept Daniel safe in the lion's den and who kept Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego safe in that fiery furnace. This is the God who provided for us with his son, born in a manger, and who grew up to teach us just how much God loves us and what links God will go to show us that love. It's the God who rained down those tongues of fire on the disciples, keeping his promise not to leave them for himself but gracing them with the Holy Spirit. It's the God who walked with the disciples every day and in every scary and new adventure as they set out to let other people know who this God was and how much God loved them. 
And it's the God who kept Paul safe in prison and in so many different situations as he traveled over starting new churches. This is the same God who throughout all the ages has guided us and loves us and sustains us and provides for us, including you and me. You know, knowing what we need even better than we know ourselves oftentimes and certainly loving us beyond anything that we can imagine. The other day I was reading a story that says this about how God provides for us and also in awesome ways, but also sometimes in ways that we have to look back on and say, oh, that was God with us. Well, I was reading this story that says, one day there was a man who was driving along the road and he saw an older woman whose car was stranded. And in that dim light of the fading day, he could see that, you know, obviously she needed some kind of help as she stood outside of her car there. So he pulled up along her Mercedes and um, he got out of his Pinto and it was still kind of sputtering, you know, before it shut off, you know, how sometimes older cars do. And he walked up and even though he had a smile on his face, you know, obviously the woman was a little bit worried. No one had stopped in the last hour to help her as she was stranded on the side of the road. It was starting to get dark out. So obviously, you know, she thought to herself, is, is this guy okay? Is he gonna hurt me somehow? He didn't look really safe. He looked kind of poor, kind of hungry. And as she stood out there in the cold, the man could tell that the woman was a little frightened and he could see it in her eyes. And he knew that, that fear, you know, that, that chill that comes inside of you that only fear can produce. So he said to her, you know, I'm here to help you, ma'am. Why don't, why don't you wait in the car where it's warm? And by the way, he said, my name is Brian Anderson. Well, all she had was a flat tire, but you know, for an older woman, that was bad enough. And so Brian crawled under the car and looking for the place to put the jack, and he ended up kind of scraping his hands and his knuckles up and stuff, and, and he got dirty and so forth. And Well, he was able to change the tire, and he stood up kind of dirty, his hands were sore. And as though he was tightening the lug nuts, the woman rolled down her window and started a conversation with him. And she told him that um, she was from St. Louis and she was only passing through. And um, she said she couldn't thank him enough you know, for coming to her rescue. And Brian just kind of smiled and he closed the trunk. And the woman asked, well, how much do I owe you? And you know, for her, any amount at that time would have been worth it because as she stood there, you know, the night was starting to fall and, and imagine all those awful things that could have happened to her and so glad that he had stopped. Well, Brian never thought twice about being paid because, you know, it just wasn't a job to him. This was someone helping someone else. And, you know, he said, God knows that there were so many times that people had helped him along life's journey. And he had lived his whole life, you know, that way, just helping other people out. It didn't occur to him to act any other way. Well, Brian told her that if she really wanted to pay him back, then the next time that she saw someone in need, you know, then just pay it forward and help that person out. And he said, maybe just think of me. Well, he waited until she started her car and drove off. And, um, it had been a, a cold and kind of depressing day for him, but now his spirit kind of felt lifted from helping her out. Well, a few miles down the road, the woman saw there was a small cafe and um, it started to rain. And she thought, well, maybe she would stop in and get something to eat before she made the rest of the journey home. It was kind of a, a dingy looking kind of restaurant as she walked through that rain to go inside. The outside were two gas pumps. And it was definitely not a, a scene where she had spent very much time before in her life. Well, the waitress came over and brought a clean towel because she saw the woman's hair was wet from walking through the rain to get inside. And the waitress had a really sweet smile on her face, you know, in, in spite of, you know, being on her feet the whole day. The woman noticed that the waitress was probably about eight months pregnant, and, um, but she didn't let the strain and the aches change her attitude at all. Well, the older woman wondered how someone who seem, seemingly had so little could be so kind to someone else. But then she thought about Brian Anderson. Well, after the woman finished her meal, she paid with a $100 bill. 
and the waitress quickly went off to get her change. But the older woman had slipped out the door and was gone by the time the waitress came back. And the waitress wondered, you know, where the woman could be, but then she noticed that on the napkin there was a note that was written to her. And the waitress is reading it and tears are kind of starting to form in her eyes. And um, the woman wrote, you don't owe me anything. She said, you know, I've, I've been there too. Somebody once helped me out, and so I'm, I'm going to help you out. And if you really want to pay me back, here's what you can do. Just don't let this chain of love end with you. And under the napkin were four more $100 bills. Well, there were still tables to clear. There were sugar bowls to fill and people to serve. But she made it through to the end of her shift, and she went home. And that night, as she got home, she climbed into bed and... She was thinking about that money that the woman had left and the note that she had written. You know, she thought, how could the woman have known that she and her husband really could use this money with a new baby coming on the way pretty soon? It was going to be hard. And she knew how worried her husband was. And he was lying there in bed next to her sleeping. And she reached over and kind of gave him a, a soft kiss. And she said, everything's going to be okay. I love you. Brian Anderson. So, yep, you know, so many years God has continued to amaze us with not just those tongues of fire that he rained down or the ability of people to talk in different languages and understand each other, but God has amazed us with that ability to provide for us in ways that maybe we didn't even know we needed provided for or had imagined for ourselves. And God continues to do that for us today and will continue it in the future. All we have to do is just place our lives in God's hands, you know, let God know the desires of our heart, let God know our, our fears, our, our questions, our dreams, our wants, our, our needs, and trust that God, who has been there from the very beginning of time, will continue to be here for us. You know, holding you close, blessing you with joy and peace, and loving you always. So as you look back over your day each night and you lie with your head down to rest, I hope that you will see the many ways that God has shown you his presence with you, his providing for you throughout your day, that you can say along with Brother Lawrence, God, you have outwitted me again. Amen. Well, let's count those many blessings and the many ways that God has blessed us as we give back to God a portion of what he has given to us.
have to offer is everything we are and can hope to be. Use that which is good, change that which is not, and purify the whole. Through your power and work within us, this is we come to ask. Amen. You may be seated. Education director and Rachel Mock and Tracy Ripley. And we've had two team helpers who are so appreciated by the teachers for helping in so many different ways. And Riley and Dino and Lena Ripley. Riley and Lena, would you talk for a moment? Show 
share just a, a few highlights um, from their teaching time. If you guys want to add anything. So um, during my time, when I would uh, be teaching Sunday school, we would have kind of a wide range of kids. I think from three years old to 13. So trying to find something that's going to keep the attention of that span of kids. So we always tried to incorporate something fun. And I was asking guys one of his favorite things he did. And he said when we were finding the lamb. So we were teaching the lesson of when God left the 99 to find the one that had left or was wandering and had wandered away from him. And so the kids had to find sheep all hidden around in the room. And I had told them how many we had, and we could only find nine. And no one could find the tenth one until I opened the Bible lesson. And it was in the Bible. And so they were all excited that we found the same sheep. And that was a good way to teach them about how happy Jesus was when he had somebody who had lost their way and found their way back to him. So trying to find um, fun lessons like that helped to not only make it hands on because sometimes they're fidgety, but it also helped to kind of convey the message in a way that they could all understand. Right, so we worked on how it's, we had a one book of God for Bible this year. Okay, well, we're going to learn how to open it, find pages, do it, read it. And so we took turns on bringing the Bibles in, trying to read the passage, and got any of them that could possibly read, help them read it to us, and we would sit and discuss it and work on the. Uh, they teach me something new, or I teach them something new, or we would like use our own personal experience of, oh, well, this might have happened to you, or you know, when we discussed uh, you know, Jesus and being here for <coughs> us so that we could die on the cross. And well, I said, you know, how would you or Tommy feel that that's why she had you is so this could happen? We did, and we did that for us, you know, and that's what you have to think about when you sitting in church or you're up here listening, it's not just some person that died on the cross. I said, this is somebody important to us that loved us this much. That's how much he loved you. And you need to understand, you know, to give that love back. And we work on how to talk to God and so we can build a relationship and Oh, that's about the sheep. What the sheep? I don't know what the sheep are, but you don't have them. <laughs> you know, we, we got the pink pumpkins and we baked cookies that they could share for everybody. And, um, have the old ones, help the little ones with the coloring. And when they're nice, we sometimes put them up on the wall. We did bravely take down one of the wall things and try to redo it. So I'm like, oh. Supposed to be our classroom now. Let's fix it. Don't touch the other one yet, but bring it in there. Yeah. And I was the alternate when I, nobody else could eat. <laughs> <laughs> and we usually ended up in the kitchen because we eat everybody. So.
I was rushing, trying to get to a dentist appointment, trying to feed my kid, trying to eat something healthy for myself, and you know, I just wanted a wrap at Herbie's and eat me a sandwich with all this bread. You know, and I didn't even, and it took him so long just to make a sandwich, and I was just like, I took it back, I'm like, just give me back my money, I don't have time for you to make another one. You know, and I'm just like, you know, Jesus, I'm being tempted, I'm being tempted, please keep me, calm me down, please. Keep, and and Elder goes, Jesus, please help mommy calm down. <laughs> this is so cute. Nice. And I laughed. So that was like, there you go. That's all it took was me to, you know, chill out and start laughing and I was fine. So we're going to hand out our Sunday school certificates. We have Alex Joy and Ocean Vine. Uh, LJ Sears, Liza James Sears.
do much to love and take care of our community. And also through our denomination, we um, help take care of the world, really. And so I want to take a moment to recognize these people that wear so many hats at the church and to thank everyone for being a, a part of the church family, whether you attend here in person or you're online and so forth, or financial giving and you're giving of your time and your families. I wanted to start with Sue Morrison. Um, she retired as our clerk this year, and um, it's been some discussion about how many years she's done that, but honestly, I don't remember anybody else being clerk while I was here, so we know that it's been several years where she's taking those minutes of the, of the council meetings, and she's always my go-to person. I call and say, okay, when was this person baptized, you know? When did they join the church? What's the date of someone's passing? So on and so forth. And so there's um, always those things. But besides that, she's been a part of Women's Fellowship for so many years. And Women's Advent Evening, I don't even know how many tables she's probably helped set for the Women's Advent Evening. Um, and countless hours with the blood mobile and so forth, and cleaning the church and the church dinners and in so many different ways. So, so we, we wanted to pause today and Thank you for those years of being a clerk, and I have a flower for you too, so if you want to take that, you take it to your soccer team later. <laughs> but thank you so much. And, um, okay, so Rhonda is both our church council moderator and our church secretary. She also serves on Christian Ed, whether she always knows she's on Christian or not, we call her yes, she is. And um, as, as many of you know, Haley is in the Peace Corps in Columbia, and Rhonda will be visiting in just a few weeks. So Rhonda, your church family wanted to help you out with the trip by giving you some fun money to spend while you were gone, and so we have that for you today. fun outings, Bible study, all those kind of things. And as I mentioned, um, Becky Skidmore is the chairperson, and then also serving are Amy Cochran and Jordan Michael, Tracy Ripley, Rachel Knock, Liza Sears, Alicia Woodall, Rhonda Hecker, Julianne Smith, and, and Sarah helps us out in many different ways. So thank you to Christian Ed. <laughs> And that is one one of our church officers. Dorothy is not only our assistant moderator, but she's also now our clerk. And um, she makes sure each Sunday that we have coffee and tea downstairs and cookies to eat. And she's here pretty much every day, taking care of the community cupboard at the at the back door. Um, helps with church dinners and um, you know make sure that the, everything's always stocked in so many different ways. Dorothy helps around the church, so Dorothy, we thank you. <laughs> and Betty Davis has been church treasurer as long as I know, so I, I don't know how many years altogether, but um, she's. Not only church treasurer, but I understand that she usually helps Dorothy remember to do things too. And um, she's just kind of the go-to person if we have questions about things or any kind of needs that comes up. She sends the cards out for so many cards out for people through the church caring um, group, helps at the church dinners. Um, um, both she and Dorothy help organize that knit and stitch group in so many different ways. Um, she's just a, a general help around the church. So. And our diaconate board um, oversees the spiritual needs of the church and 
helps with planning the services and ushering and serving communion. And the members are our chairperson, Christy Berwin Terry, and Sue Morrison, Mary Ellen Cardinal, Debbie Michael, Mary Ann Greer, Kathleen Eldridge, Donna Eskridge, Jim Melby, Dennis Melby, and Jordan Michael. So thank you for everything that you do. Um, from the candles to making sure that things are running for a worship service and for special services and so forth. So thank you so much for all of that. And our trustees. I said everything the trustees did would be here at the Republic for a long time, but according to the council, they maintain and care for the church building and they plan our church budget each year. Um, our members are chairperson John Bosnott, and then we have Dennis Melby and John Michael and Jim, Jim Eskridge. And we thank you for all you do, you know, from the general maintenance to putting in new furnaces and making the flower beds look so <coughs> wonderful, answering 911 when it's got an elevator, um, <laughs> the beautiful front lawn at Christmas time, and changing light bulbs and you know, etc., etc., etc. We thank you for everything that you do. Our Christian Outreach Committee oversees the outreach mission work and things like the Thanksgiving baskets and the gifts that we give to the families at Christmas, the <coughs> Easter baskets, and the community giving cupboard, or whatever else may happen to spring up during the year. And our members are Kathleen Eldridge and Cliff and Catherine Oceanvine. And really the whole congregation as we pitch in and help out with school supplies and the Easter baskets and all those kind of things. So thank you. <laughs> Our fundraising group made up of, of Joni and John, Bell Ramos and John Bosnott and Julie Moore. And as I say every year, just because your name doesn't start with J, you can still be part of this fundraising group. They shop and prepare and cook and serve the church fundraisers and dinners. And, and Joni also helps out while she's with the dinners, with the eating, women's advent um, evening, and the mother and child banquet, um, and many different ways around the church. So we thank that group for everything that they do. <laughs> In the past few years, we brought about the need for the multimedia here at the church, um, Wi-Fi, and the church website, and the church Facebook page, and the live streaming of the worship services. And we thank um, Cliff and Catherine for helping to set up um, <coughs> printers and, and tablets and laptops and spending the Wi-Fi here. And just a general help when I call 911 to Cliff and say, hey, my computer's doing this, what should I do? And also a huge thank you to Jordan, who is here every Sunday to run the, the PowerPoint for us and Jordan, you know, so many things that Jordan does and we help you and to help out in whatever way that he can. And um, Jim Roscoe helps each week. I, I did a portion of the PowerPoint together and I sent it to him. He puts the rest of it together and sends it to Jordan. So um, thank you um, to everyone who's helped out with that, especially you guys. <laughs> Just a general thank you to everyone for what everyone does from praying for the, the church and me and giving of your finances and giving of so much of your time and attending worship and taking part and committing to your boards and helping to clean the church and give supplies and donating so many different ways to our outreach ministries and EPS and Sunday school supplies and generally just being in you. Thank you, and may God continue to bless us so that we can be a blessing to each other and to this community. Thank you, everyone. And now, what? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I think we should all thank Kathleen for all the beautiful flowers every Sunday. Yes, yes. Uh huh. All the
was really honored when I heard that I got to give this to you. So, substituting in your class this year has been a true joy for me, whether I was actually in your class or by sitting in the hallway, you always greeted me with a smile or a hug. It just made my day. You have such a kind heart, and I hope you never change that. This Bible is God's way of communicating with you. And whenever you're facing challenges or having trouble in your life, you open your Bible and use God's words to guide you. He is always with you, and with him, you're never alone. He loves you, and he wants the very best for you. So do I. Life is short, but we don't have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love and make haste to act with kindness and compassion and the blessing of God Almighty, the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. May they be with us today and forevermore. Amen. Amen. 